Like what you see here? Then don't forget to follow me at twitch.tv slash it's Karen Terry. Let's also address the advice that we often see for replacing said with some other word. I think that this advice sometimes leaves something to be desired. Spare Room with Karen Terry. Hey y'all and welcome to Spare Room. I'm Karen Terry and today we're going to talk about writing with sound. Humans are largely visual creatures, so we tend to first describe what we see around us, but we have all seen that writing advice that says to write about all five senses. So today we're going to talk about one of those senses, sound. These are five tips for describing sound in your writing. Broken, grinding, rhythmic, dulcet, hushed. Melodic, sweet, howling, shrill. And there are many more words that we use specifically to describe sound. I'll link a list of them down below. So don't forget about using your actual sound words. We are sometimes such visual creatures, I think we forget even to just use the sound words themselves. So that's my first tip. Don't forget about them. And when it comes to sound words, let's also address the advice that we often see for replacing said with some other word. I think that this advice sometimes leaves something to be desired. Said, for the reader, is a word that you can quickly gloss over without even noticing. Using it means the reader can focus on the words that were used instead of a specific image of the tone of voice, but sometimes it is appropriate to replace said with a different word. So when should you describe the sound of someone's voice instead of just using said? When their tone of voice shifts? When the tone of voice betrays something crucial about the character? Or when the tone of voice means something for the narrative? And when you do this replacement, I recommend replacing it one-to-one. -one. So what do I mean by that? What I mean is don't say said quietly, say whispered. Don't say said loudly, say yelled. Use one word. And don't say things like asked questioningly. Asked is already a question. Nix that adverb. Find one word that does exactly what you want. I'm also going to link down below a list of a bunch of words that you can use to replace said. Now remember we talked about the times that you want to do this, and it's not all the time, and you're going to lose that impact if you do it too often. So do this sparingly, only those specific instances. Pop, squish, drip, sizzle, smash. Whenever you want to draw attention to the tactile nature of a sound, use an automatopoeia. For the non-native English speakers out there, these are words that vaguely sound like the sound that they're describing. So when we use them, we evoke what that sound sounds like, and it gives the reader a much more visceral experience of reading about that sound. So in addition to using your sound words, when you really want to make sure the reader hears the sound in their head, use an onomatopoeia. So far, we've talked about actually using our sound words, but there's more to writing sound. You can evoke sound by actually writing with sound. Read what you've written out loud and feel how it sounds to your ears. This is a proofreading technique that I recommend anyway, but I also think it's important to understanding the sound of what you're writing. If you can read it to yourself out loud, you can hear that and then actually try to evoke that in the writing with the words that you choose and the sounds that they make. Typically, when we think about something like this, we think about rhyming, which is where the ending sound of a word matches the ending sound of another word in what you've written. But there's lots of other techniques that are like this. Specifically, we're going to describe alliteration, assonance, and consonants. Alliteration is using the same sound at the beginning of a word. For example, around the rough and rugged rocks the ragged rascal ran. That er sound is being alliterated at the beginning of each word. Assonance is using the same vowel sound in each word. For example, 
hear the lark and hearken to the barking of the dark fox gone to ground. That R sound is repeated in lark, in hearken, in bark, in dark. Consonance is the same thing as assonance, except we do it with the consonant sound instead of the vowel sound. For example, the black sack is in the back. That k sound is repeated. Using techniques like this gives the passage a certain sound, and when you match the sound with the kind of tone or mood that you're going for, you can unlock a whole new richness to your writing. And if you've not dabbled in this before, now you know this is what a lot of expert poets are doing. In addition to those techniques, you'll want to give your writing a specific rhythm or flow. When things are slow, draw your writing out in long meandering sentences. During action scenes, use quick, punchy sentences. Or when you want to draw the reader's attention, all of a sudden, change your rhythm. And don't be scared to be a little repetitive sometimes. It can be used to make a great point. You can use this repetition in your sentence structure. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. Or you could repeat a word, but with a different meaning. In the stories we tell ourselves, we tell ourselves. Or you can simply repeat a word to draw importance to that specific word. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. Can the character hear it? Would they notice hearing it? If they would, absolutely put it in. Focusing on what sounds the character that you're writing would tend to hear and notice is going to draw the reader into that character and into their own personal world. Writing from this perspective is a powerful tool to say something about the character and about how they interact in the world that they're in by relating to the sounds that they're hearing and what sounds they focus on. So if you've heard all of this advice so far and you're thinking, well, then how do I know what sounds to include and what sounds not to include? This is how you know. It has to do with what your character can hear and what your character would notice. So this has been five tips for writing sound. To recap, use your sound words. Don't forget automatopoeia, alliteration, assonance, and consonance. Write like a rapper. Focus on the point of view character's experience. So after hearing all of this, are these things that you're going to implement in your writing? Or were you maybe already doing these and you have some additional tips for using sound in your writing down below? Let me know all of those experiences in the comments. And of course, don't forget as always to make it a great day.